Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Norville, this edition's top stories. Government launches a new initiative to ignite and sustain the CARICOM identity. Regional travellers to St. Lucia to pay less in departure tax as the island announces a Caribbean travel bubble. And tourism transportation operators better equipped to deliver services amid COVID-19. St. Lucia joined the rest of the CARICOM community Monday in celebrating CARICOM Day with the launch of a new initiative to ignite and sustain the CARICOM identity. Caribbean Community CARICOM Day marks the anniversary of the signing of the Treaty of Chagaramas, establishing the Caribbean community on the 4th of July 1973. Some 47 years later, CARICOM continues to evolve, achieving new feats as it gets stronger. Ambassador to CARICOM and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, Her Excellency Elmer Jean Isaac, explained that citizens in every member state have a role to play in molding CARICOM's future. Like most 50-year-olds, the Caribbean community boasts sufficient youthful vigor to continue to imbue life and energy into our project, while tempering exuberance with the kind of wisdom that is born of trials, hard knocks, and varied experience. There is no doubt that as a community of sovereign states, we sometimes have to manage the tug of war between national and regional interests. That is inevitable. But what is most important is that we never lose sight of why we have embarked upon this journey and ultimately the kind of heritage that we wish to create for future generations. The Regional Integration Unit in the Office of the Prime Minister, in collaboration with the CARICOM Secretariat, will launch the I Am CARICOM Communications campaign in St. Lucia. Her Excellency Isaac explained that the campaign is aimed at increasing visibility and understanding of CARICOM among citizens of the community. It seeks to engage and assist citizens of the community to locate themselves within the CARICOM construct, institutions, governance structure, policies and plans, and to take ownership and participate fully in the regional integration development agenda. To launch the I Am CARICOM campaign and in celebration of CARICOM Day 2020, the unit has planned a number of activities, including the unveiling of the I Am CARICOM photo frame, marking today as CARICOM Colors Day, interviews, online games, and the pop-up booth where persons can obtain information on CARICOM's role, contributions, activities, strategies, and the development of the community strategic plan. In designing the 2015-2019 strategic plan, the community made a significant effort to include as broad a cross-section of citizens as possible. A similar participatory approach is being used in crafting the strategic plan that will govern the movement post-2020. Minister with Responsibility for External Affairs, Honorable Sarah Flood Beaubre, highlighted strides made by CARICOM. We have taken strides in fulfilling the mandate of CARICOM to promote economic integration and cooperation amongst members with actions such as the implementation of the Common External Tariff and the widening of the categories eligible for free movement of skills and labor. Together we have tackled imbalanced and unfair global systems analogous to the parable of David and Goliath, whether it be through our well-orchestrated advocacy on relaxing the criteria to international funding to reflect a cognizance of the economic and physical vulnerabilities of small island developing states or strategically lobbying the removal of member states from black lists by entities even after commitments have been made to alter domestic legislation or when current practices are consistent with internationally approved recommendations. To commemorate CARICOM Day 2020, the government of St. Lucia launched CARICOM Colors Day, an initiative geared towards promoting the CARICOM identity and increasing public awareness of the organization, its institutions and their work. And as the Caribbean region celebrates CARICOM Day, the heads of government and the peoples are facing the single largest threat to member states in recent history, the novel coronavirus. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced the lockdown of the islands and the closing of their borders to each other and the world. 
But as the Wifkarikum states have flattened the curve, travel is resuming. The government of St. Lucia has introduced new and updated protocols for arrivals from July 9, 2020. Travelers will be required to obtain a negative PCR test within seven days of travel. However, a travel bubble comprising CARICOM territories that have zero or low instance of COVID-19 cases are exempt from the seven-day pre-testing requirement and quarantine. The government of St. Lucia has also announced a reduction of the 54 EC dollar departure tax for regional travelers. Minister with Responsibility for External Affairs, Honorable Sarah Flood Bobre, made the announcement at the flag raising ceremony in honor of CARICOM Day. The most recently confronted challenge has been access to equitable and affordable regional travel. And in that regard, I am pleased to announce that in response to the current pandemic and to contribute to the regional efforts to bolster intra-regional travel, the Cabinet of Ministers of St. Lucia intends to approve the reduction of departure tax on regional travel to $35. Minister with Responsibility for External Affairs, Honorable Sarah Flood Bobre. There's good news for travelers from St. Lucia to the United Kingdom, as the island is among countries on the travel corridor list released by the UK government, meaning visitors from St. Lucia do not have to self-isolate on arrival in the UK. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chasney says this is testimony to the success the nation has had in managing COVID-19. The director of the Pan American Health Organization has also commended the island's handling of the pandemic. Dr. Carissa Etienne has cautioned, though, that the reopening of the economy here and in the wider region be guided by data. The personal, social, and economic toll of stay at home orders has strained our region, and the political pressure to ease restrictions is palpable. However, the virus cannot be left unchecked. As we are seeing, countries, states, and cities that do not embrace preventive measures or relax restrictions too soon can be flooded with new cases. This forces us to face a hard truth. We must not abandon what works because of fatigue or political pressure. This virus does not work that way. We need to double down on measures that save lives early on and to deploy them with more precision than ever before. We must let data, not passion, guide our actions. The PAHO director advises that countries open gradually, taking a phased approach that relies on robust surveillance, expanding testing, and contact tracing capacity. Reopening is not merely suspending travel restrictions and stay-at-home orders. It requires implementing a set of public health measures to track new cases and build sufficient capacity to detect and control new outbreaks. These steps include the ample access to timely testing for every suspected case and their contacts. We need tests, but we also need test results to be reported quickly to paint an accurate picture. The isolation of cases. Anyone with symptoms should have the guidance and support needed to reduce the chance of transmitting the disease to others. Contact tracing. This should be in place wherever possible, anchored to a strong primary healthcare system that can help reduce the risk of transmission among vulnerable communities. Tracking health systems capacity. We must ensure that the number of hospital and ICU beds remain sufficient to provide care to severe cases. The ample access to information and PPEs. This includes access to PPEs for health workers and the training to help them reduce their personal risk. 
And as air travel to St. Lucia resumes, the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, in collaboration with the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, NATMED, and the Ministry of Health, made a donation of personal protective equipment, PPE, to tourism transportation operators. More from Lisa Joseph. The equipment includes 20,000 gloves, 1,020 cloth masks, and 840 hand sanitizers, some of which are locally made in keeping with the ongoing Buy Local campaign. Officials say with the level of vulnerability of the operators that include taxi and ride share operators on island, the overall aim is to mitigate any possible spread of COVID-19 into communities. Donalyn Vite, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, explains that the Ministry has been working feverishly with the various stakeholders to ensure all precautionary measures are taken. In preparation for the resumption of, of tourism and travel um, coming in the next week, we are here to present a gift we consider. We consider it also an investment as a measure of getting the taxi sector prepared um, for the road ahead. One of the things we have to ensure is that we adhere to all of the protocols as designated by the Ministry of Health, and as part of that is the PPEs. So these play a fundamental part in terms of the preparation for you who are here today represented by so many taxi operators and associations. Minister for Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, explains the importance of putting these protective measures in place. We have to prepare ourselves because if anything we can see with COVID, uh, it is a pandemic of glorious uncertainties. Uh, what obtains today doesn't obtain tomorrow. So there could be a vaccine found tomorrow and then this will all be over. Um, so what we have to ensure is that whenever that time comes, whenever the world is ready to um, have tourism in a meaningful way again, that we are prepared. And that's what today is all about. It's just ensuring that you, our taxi drivers, are ready to compete, that you have the standards in place, that you um, are not left out of the equation, but you are rather included in what we are trying to do to get our country and our tourism sector ready for that eventual um, reopening. It's, it's only a matter of time. No one can tell when. Matthew Hutchinson, Vice President of Southern Taxi Association, expressed gratitude on behalf of the operators for the donation of the PPEs. And we have to give credit to the government and the ministry for the way this whole COVID-19 situation has been handled. I must say that when you consider the fact that all taxi drivers are in waiting, not receiving a salary, I think with Southern Taxi in particular, I think our members are ready. We know that there are going to be risks, but um, life must go on. I must also say that we as Southern Taxi is in the center of the process operating at Iwanora Airport. We have had a number of meetings and that is another reason why we should commend the government officials and in particular the Ministry of Tourism for keeping us engaged and collaborating with us in this effort. The handing over ceremony of the PPEs took place Monday, July 6, 2020. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The Cuban team of medical practitioners who are on island assisting St. Lucia's fight against COVID-19 have successfully completed an English language course facilitated by the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. Here is Anisia Antoine. The Sir Arthur Lewis Community College held a ceremony in recognition of the Cuban medical personnel who successfully completed the first phase of the English as a Second Language ESL course. The English as a Second Language program was designed to help the Cuban doctors and nurses communicate with local medical personnel, patients and the community at large while they assisted St. Lucia in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Approximately 80 Cubans completed the program, which spanned over a period of five weeks, from June 1st to July 2nd, 2020. Chairman of the Board of Governors of the Safa Lewis Community College, John Calixt, commended the brigade on completing the ESL course and expressed gratitude to the team for their assistance during the COVID-19 pandemic. The world should be unified in fighting against this global pandemic caused by the novel coronavirus COVID-19. And in this regard, we cannot underscore the importance of the Cuban Medical Brigade in their attempts at international cooperation and solidarity, especially in small island states like ours, where we have very limited resources. Therefore, as a goodwill gesture, the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, in recognition of the contribution that the Cuban doctors and nurses have made to control the spread of the coronavirus in St. Lucia, offered to conduct English instruction that will enable more effective communication with local medical personnel, patients, and the community at large. Ambassador of Cuba to St. Lucia, His Excellency Alejandro Simancas Mare, expressed gratitude to the Safa Lewis Community College for the opportunity given to the medical brigade despite the challenging conditions. There were many people also with little time available and who needed a differentiated attention because they had different levels of English. But our friends at the Siratu Lewis Community College demonstrated that there are no obstacles when there is a determination and perseverance. Then, when I visited our collaborators, they were always busy. I was told, don't bother them who are studying English. Don't bother them because otherwise the teachers will scold them. Don't bother them, they are doing the homework. Our doctors, nurses, and biomedical engineers became your Cuban students and were able to enrich their heritage thanks to you. The Chief Education Officer at the Ministry of Education, Fiona Meyer, stressed on the importance of the mutually beneficial relationship between St. Lucia and Cuba. We embrace the different cultures, what Cuba has to offer and what St. Lucia has to offer. And where best, most appropriate in the medical field. Can you imagine when you're not feeling well? This is not the time you want to socialize, it's not the time you want to try and translate. And we must applaud Sa'afa. We must applaud it. Because in as much as we see this as Sessions continue in July 2020 with a second batch of new learners as well as continuing participants. The presentation of certificates of completion took place at the Golden Palm Event Center on Saturday, July 4th, 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes, or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19, and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Reduce your farm labor to only essential workers. Ensure regular hand washing with soap and water or use 60% to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water are available. Clean all work surfaces and farm tools such as cutlasses, forks and sprayers with a 10% bleach solution. Ensure that toilets are cleaned thoroughly after each use and sanitize daily. Prohibit visitors to the farms. Limit contact among farm workers and promote social distances ensuring six feet between each worker and promote a no handshaking or unnecessary touch policy. 
more than ever before. Your important role as the gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly grown fruits, vegetables, and other local crops. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquiol. Monsieur Tan Genel, Monsieur Madame Department, qui est une responsabilité pour information en gouvernement de la GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, qui a présenté Nouvelle Aquiol, présenté au Primus Hutchinson. Département des pompiers, c'est le CI, où se voit des trucs. Audion service charitable les pompiers de Toronto en pays Canada pour aider faciliter et faire bataille contre des faits. Ça c'était le vendredi, le 3e juillet 2010. Je suis après coup en établissement les pompiers en vieux fort et tenir participation au département des étrangers en cette ci Pour cette action, ça a venu possible par effort conseil général cette ci pour Canada, Charles Francis, qui travaille près et puis ses pompiers Canada pour faciliter le voyage de Troxala pour cette ci Ambassade de bonne volonté pour cette ci Ken Chitoli, servait business li pour transporter de Troxala à PIA. Deuxième grand chef de pompier, M. George Victrim, déclarait que la présentation de Troxala a fait trop plus facile pour les pompiers faire bataille de faire cette ci Parce que conserve l'équipement pour vous mettre des faits bien cher, le gouvernement a aidé nous à bien qu'il possible, mais ce n'est pas tout le monde qui a fait un seul coup. Donc, nous avons une aide de l'autre organisation, nous avons bien apprécié. Parce que nous avons un truc pour vous mettre des mais vous savez, ce truc-là a un peu large et la pièce d'assistance nous joint. Nous avons bien vu. Selon Victrim, ce truc-là est capable de former un degré plus avancé qui se trouve qui on est présentement. On est à l'échelle, il y a un extend bien en haut pour à sa pied. So, ça ça c'est un chai sur so, pièce à à building nous ni qui bien haut. Nous ça goumé du fait à à et nous ça aussi uh, si nous ni pour mener à mon des sans rescue à mon à ce on ces building ça qui bien haut à nous. Nous ça fait ça top premier actuellement. Parmi les officiers qui a donné ces cérémonies, c'était le chef de pompiers, M. Joseph Joseph, le ministre des Affaires et Sécurité, le sénateur honorable Herman Gold Francis, le ministre de la responsabilité pour les affaires des étrangers, ça c'est l'honorable Sarah Flood Bobre, et le représentatif de pompiers à ça c'est le pompier Charitable au Canada, Craig Dockery. Département de l'éducation, c'est le ci Commencer le programme pour assister les étudiants et puis livre pour suivre l'éducation pour l'année 2020. Ça, c'est pour les étudiants qui sont à l'école des enfants et l'école première. Je conseiller les parents qui tout livre qui ont retourné ni pour en bonne condition et le livre qui a apporté un rapport à la performance et le caractère de ces étudiants généralement pour étudier et supposer ni formation nouveau. Les parents qui ont pour aussi présenter les livres de ces étudiants et qui ont pour montrer contre toi pour étudier depuis l'année passée, c'est déjà ça là, qui si a continué le programme là. Si c'est un autre monde qui a représenté ces étudiants, et qui a pour nous briser une lettre d'autorisation, de mon temps, c'est pas vraiment ça là, qui présent, en ces différentes places de distribution, ça là, je a pour porter masse à ce fait et et pour sanitaire la meilleur, et pour obéir à distance sociale. Distribution pour Paris, les mots 8, qui a fait en bioéducation, commencé le 6 pour le 10 juillet. Pour Paris, les mots 7, c'est le 13 pour le 17 juillet, en bioéducation. Pour Paris, le mot 6, c'est le 20 pour 24 juillet en bureau d'éducation. Pour Paris, le mot 5, c'est le 27 pour le 31 juillet en l'école secondaire Miku. En Paris, le mot 4, c'est le 3e août 
pour le 21 2020 en tisafal l'école RC pour pas le mot 3 c'est le troisième en mois d'août pour le 7 en l'école c'est tes enfants RC en pas le mot D c'est le 10 pour le 14 à août en l'école tes enfants RC et pas le mot Yon c'est le 17 pour le 21 à août à l'école tes enfants RC Collège Saint-Louis au monde présente les qualifications pour ces, les officiers médicaux hors pays Cuba qui en est fini première phase à étude des langages anglais. Pourquoi on a été trouvé organisé spécifiquement comme une initiative de bonne volonté pour ces officiers médicaux à la cérémonie de présenter un certificat de précou pour présenter certificat de précou en Golden Palm Events Center à Rodney Bay, samedi le 4 juillet. Atelier du pour cinq semaines, commencé le 1er juin pour le 2e juillet. Programme de études anglais, c'est pour te à assister ces officiers médicaux là pour ça capable de communiquer plus mais et puis les personnels médicaux en cette ici et aussi les gens qui sont malades. Pas d'ailleurs ici pour un défait de bataille contre la maladie de Corona. Les officiers se font le soutien de ces officiers médicaux cubains pour des gros travaux pour ces différents programmes là et à peu près 80 ans ils ont fini cette là saison session qui a continué en juillet côté un deuxième groupe qui a participé. Et c'est comme ça nous avons trouvé une nouvelle langue qui a remercié autant pour qu'elle garde. Nous avons une invitation pour que je ne puisse pas considérer qu'on se fait la vie dans les présents de l'autre nouvelle. À quoi est-ce que nous avons pris le général? Merci à Pearl Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Channel Norville.